Hi everybody, I'm Eric Enga. I'm the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting, and this is another thrilling episode of Hardcore SEO. And today I'm with... I'm Rob Perosi. I'm a senior marketing consultant with Stone Temple Consulting, and last time I checked, I worked for you. That's a good thing, I hope. But uh, I'll let you tell me that later. I don't want that on camera, for sure. But Rob, I have a question for you. What is a widget? Well, there, a widget is a little piece of code. You can obtain it from another site. Uh, it adds functionality to your site. An uh, example might be a mortgage calculator, uh, perhaps a precious metal prices widget. But it's something that adds some level of functionality to your site that you think is valuable and that you want. Uh, okay, interesting. Now, if I were a publisher, should I think about creating a widget for my site and getting all kinds of other people to publish it on their site and just give myself a link back to my site? Should I do that? Well, I would counsel moderation. Okay, This is not something where you want to put it every place. It's something done uh, effectively if you do it in moderation, if it's natural. You don't want to be placing it on a million different sites. But, uh, you know, count, I counsel caution when it comes to uh, putting widgets on sites. So what about uh, Google's Webmaster Guidelines? What do they say about this? Well, that's an interesting thing that you asked that. In, in January, they actually changed their wording, and we've talked about this, um, and we think it's fairly significant. They seem to indicate that widgets done properly, and I'll put that in quotes, um, are okay. okay. But again, I counsel caution. It should not be your primary link building tactic. It should just be one of many different things that you're doing to obtain links. And you want it to flow naturally. You want people to be obtaining the widget because they think it adds specific functionality to their site and they want it. And that's kind of the heart of an editorial endorsement. Yeah, okay, interesting. Now, if I were to think about using it as a part of my SEO strategy, keeping in mind that we're going to do this in moderation and not have it be our primary link building tactic. How would I go about it? What should I do? What are some rules that I should follow? Well, I have five rules, and okay. I, uh, I wrote them down because I was not uh, sure that I would remember them. So it may not be Letterman's top ten list, but I have five rules here. So the first rule, uh, no sculpted link anchor text. Okay. okay. Sculpted link anchor text, you're deliberately trying to manipulate. Okay. So, a simple attribution link, maybe a link from your logo in the widget, a link from the name of your company or the name of your website. So keep it simple. Okay. So no sculpted link anchor text. There you go. Uh, the next one is don't get cute with where the links go. Okay. If the if it's an attribution link, it makes sense for it to go to your home page. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't make sense for it to go five pages down into the site. So don't spray these links all over the place. Don't get cute. It's attribution. You gave them the link. You are such and such company, and that's where the where the link should go. Yeah. Okay. Don't stuff extra links into uh, your widget. Okay. I don't get five links per widget. You don't get five. You get. You're lucky to get one. Okay. So don't stuff extra links. Uh, you know, the person taking a widget would expect the attribution. You know, it's reasonable to expect that I give credit to who gave me the. But, you know, five other links to five other pages on the site, that's, that's, again, you're starting to get unnatural, you're trying to manipulate. Fastest way to make Google moody. We don't like it when Google is moody. <laughs> okay. If the widget is part of an affiliate program, no follow the links. Real simple there. It's not an editorial endorsement. The widget's going up on the site because the, the other site feels they're going to make money. You know, they're getting paid. Okay, so the link should be no follow. Money changing hands, no, no, if you follow the link. So no follow that link. No follow that link. Got it. And then the last one is what we started with, moderation. Okay, you do not want to use it as your primary link building practice. Uh, as I said, if you go out and you heavily promote it and you have 100,000 links and 80,000 of them are from your widget, that's unnatural. Right. Even if you followed all the other guidelines, that's still unnatural, and you'll probably get called out on it. 
So if I were to sort of summarize uh, this at the end of the day, I mean, you've talked a lot about moderation, but just to try to make that a more complete picture for people, what that really means is, let's say you have a great uh, PR campaign going on, you're doing some great stuff with content marketing, you're getting written up by this uh, magazine and this major blog, and, and you have all these kinds of great things you're doing, and yes, you get some... Uh, links also from distributing a widget which is high value, relevant to the sites that's going on, relevant to your site, etc., that it can be a complementary part of a larger strategy. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Uh, again, you use it in moderation, but you should have a whole host of ways that links are coming into your site, of course, all of them natural. Okay. And the thing you want to avoid is manipulation. And you do not want to be forcing this upon somebody. You do not want to be overly promoting it and everything else. You just want it to be another tool in the toolbox. You get some links from it. As you said, you get links from other sources as well. Great. So that's it for this episode of Hardcore SEO. See you next time.